Hola, nuestros amigos de todo el mundo, nuestros amigos tanguero. How are you doing in the other side of the screen? Today is our last milonga class. For now, in the future we, we might get back to them. Um, I wanted to say thank you to all the subscribers we have. We achieved, YouTube told us that we achieved like 20 plus uh, hours of views in our videos. 20,000 plus. 20,000. I say 20? No, 20,000. <laughs> That's couple, like three That's more zeros. That's a series. great achievement. Yeah, so we are very excited about it. And before we start with the class today, if you didn't subscribe yet, please do. If you didn't like, please do. If you didn't comment, please do. Do any of those things that help us grow our channel. Right? Absolutely. So we keep sharing all of this with you. We love doing this. It's a lot of fun for us. Um, you know, our goal is to improve the tango in the tango community. So we have better dancers and we enjoy dancing with other people more and more every day. Today we're going to finish the series mm -hmm. with a great step. I love this movement. This is pretty advanced. Uh, it requires um, certain control of uh, various elements. And the key is to uh, move your hips. See, this happens at an angle. So you have to be able to rotate your body in preparation for this. Now, oftentimes, our students, I mean, not our students, people who want to, uh, our students are good, they're all great. Uh, but of course. <laughs> sometimes people forget about the disassociation. And for example, if I move my torso in this direction and I put my legs here, my partner is in the way. You see, you are in front of me, and if I move my legs in front, I will kick you. But if we consider the space outside our partner, right here and here, there is plenty of space to move. And that is what we need to connect in order to do this movement. If I try to do this sacada onto my partner, this is a traspied that is induced by pushing onto my partner. Uh, so if I try to do it like this and I push it onto my partner's thigh like this, then this will be driven right onto her leg mm -hmm. and she will have an accident. So I don't want to do that. However, if I'm moving here and I put my partner laterally and push this way, then her leg crosses away. There is a way to push that energy and let that energy come out to the side, mm -hmm. right? So this is what we're going to learn today. The movement goes as this. You go to the side step and you go step, push, step, and then you walk again. There's something important to do this by yourself. When you do this as a follow, everybody should do it as a follow. You want to lengthen you want to reach back and lengthen in such a way that you get your leg out of the way. Then when this leg is lengthening and pulling and crossing this much, yep. then you start seeing it behind on the other side. Do you, re do you realize this? You see, this is this side on the right, but then if I pull and lengthen and cross, it's back on my other side. This is what is required, a cross, so then the other leg goes in front. Mm -hmm. Now so, we are practicing the other side, though. But we will do one, two, both. three. One, two, three. That's what the movement feels as a follow. So it's very important that the follows take a step that is very long. Often follows take a short step, and then you run out of space because the only distance you have is the distance in which you transfer uh, away. If you allow yourself to look at your partner and read him. Then, as he pushes, you step back, and that will ensure that you have space to walk away. And one more thing to, to, for the technique of the follow, since you are talking about the follow technique, we need for this, we need to have loose hips. Very important, because if you uh, are a kind of follow that have the hips all the time in a specific position, and you, for example, move without allowing your hips to tilt in any way, this might feel very, very awkward. It's like when you cross and sometimes you're, you feel like it's stiff, your cross is stiff, 
usually it's, it's because your hips are actually stiff. They are not accommodating, they are not tilting to make the cross smooth, okay? So if I cross, uh, especially if I'm being displaced, like in the step we are teaching today, what I will need to do at the moment I receive that push in my leg is to have relaxed leg that allow me to cross there, but my hip also, you see, allows for this to accommodate without me being so stiff that I become very um, rigid. rigid at the moment of the cross. It's common sometimes to see this cross, like we are kind of... Uh, Tensing up. Yeah, too tense, right? So <laughs> to avoid the tension, to make it smooth, you need to relax more your hips. When you reach and you receive that, allow the hip to go to a position or even your, your, your butt. I mean, that, all that area needs to have certain relaxation to accommodate that leg in a smooth way. If not, if it becomes rigid, it, uh, it doesn't feel good anymore. Yes. So when you do that, this transition should be smooth during the cross and when you get out of that cross, yeah? That's a good point. I always, I always remind the leads that when they're dancing with the follows, they have to somehow observe the, the skill levels of the follow and decide what is within an intermediate level, what is within an advanced level, and what is with, within a beginner's level complexity, not to make the follows have to endure steps that are just too difficult to do. Mm -hmm. uh, because the experience can turn s s suddenly uh, from a very pleasant one to a not so much fun, depends on what movements you are proposing. So really, you have the kiss the, you have the kiss in your hand of success uh, if you can decide carefully what more appropriate movements to do with this partner. Uh, and this is one of them. You have to be very careful with this. And second, leading her in a diagonal. So she steps diagonally to the left and I push to the right. If the follow is tense, like Eva is telling you, that is not the response because with too much rigidity you cannot move. Here, um, resisting the lead Confronting his energy is really not the solution. That only is going to make this confrontation even stronger and it will feel uh, uh, like a fight. Mm -hmm. You want to be molded into shape a little bit. So as the lead pushes your hip, what I do here is I step right behind her foot a little bit. Yes. That way when I've transferred my weight, there is leverage here. But I don't bump onto her. It's not like I go, bam, and I hit you in the hip. I place my foot further close, you see? So as I transfer my weight, bend my knee, my, my leg pushes her, her thigh away. Quiet. One, well, two, yeah. three. And I have to be decisive about that. As I cross behind, can I show my part? Yes. I would normally do a step to the side and look a little bit of a swing. Eva was talking about having your hips loose. Yeah. I move my hip a little bit outside so then I can come from the side. You see? One, two, three. I love doing this movement. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I cross behind, and I make sure I cross behind rather tight, because if I put my foot far like this, then I will have to retrograde to go forward again. I only want to go forward and forward. Forward and forward. Yeah. This is a very nice, simple step. Not simple. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. How about we dance? And then we tell them a couple more tips for this. Yeah, because I already know what I will say next. Stay tuned. I found a nice milonga <laughs> that I want to dance. This is a very slow milonga. Milonga de mis amores. I used to dance this when I was 19. 
Very nice. We did do both sides, actually, sometimes in a row. It's difficult to do in a row. You have to build first one side, the other side, to put them together so you don't crash with each other. And now, the, what I want to say before is, Liz, your torso doesn't turn your partner, OK? You're going in a diagonal, but your torso is where it is. If you do this and you turn your partner, you will have a different result. So the top and the bottom works a little bit in a counter body. Yes? Um, so you can keep, can we show? When Patricio pushes me here, we go in a diagonal. Can you turn feet away? But our torso, see where our torso is? He's not turning me. He's not doing this and doing this with the torso. So torso stays in the same direction. The legs go more in the diagonal. So we keep that counter body here. OK? We, it's not, we are not turning our torso, correct? So one. Boom. Yes. Yes, kind of like our leg stays a little bit diagonal. So I step Correct. front, cross behind, and I go slightly diagonal, and then I recover, kind of like a figure eight a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, my yeah. movement is one, yum, pam, pam. And then if I want to do the other side, I have to cross my leg and then go behind. It's very challenging. It's way easier to do quick, quick, slow, step, step, quick, quick, slow. 
meaning quick, quick, slow, step, step. I use these two steps to position myself on the other side, and then quick, quick, slow. Can we show it? Yes. Let's show them facing the camera here. Side step, quick, quick, slow, step, step, quick, quick, slow. <laughs> okay. We do it laterally. Mm -hmm. Side step, quick, quick, slow. Whoops, I forgot. <laughs> you want to do two, two in a row. <laughs> quick, quick, slow, step, step, quick, quick, slow. Okay. Step, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. That's in a room. row. I love it when it's quick, quick, slow, yeah. quick, quick, slow. Well, that's, that's a hard, really difficult version because you got to be right there, right after one of them. But I think if you do uh, the steps in between before entering, you have more chances of having a, a better angle to do the second one. Well, this is, okay? absolutely, this is what could happen. Um, and I find myself reminding people about this quite often because th this what it could really happen. Uh, I'm just gonna do this ah, by myself. Okay. I just don't want to cover you <laughs> behind me. Para que se vea. If you push your follow with a leg towards her, she will get trapped here and then fall on her butt like this because she is getting blocked, right? So that sensation of bringing your partner into this position is something that you want to avoid. Nobody likes to feel cornered like that, going backwards on a dead end with a leg cross. Yeah. That is why we're talking about, Eva is talking about disassociation, putting the body laterally like this, crossing the body and advancing this way. See, I go, here, I put my right hip forward, and then I go laterally. Although, I might advance towards you, I do it with my hips pointing away, like my belly button turns to the left. And then I go forward. But I keep this body cross, and I cross behind, and I'm still in that position. And then I walk in front, but it feels like, it, like it's cross. If I have the ability to road, steer my partner to turn into a back ocho, then she will be ready for the next one and then I can go in this other direction. But the strength in the upper body is what keeps you straight this way. Mm -hmm. That is why two steps in between make it a lot more easy to connect, to one, connect side. one side with the other. And again, eliminating tension is best for this. Yes. One, two, three, walk. Walk, one, two, three. One, two, three, walk, walk, one, two, three. I believe there are some old videos from last year in which we are talking about the walk, the tango walk, mm -hmm. and we brought students along the lesson to practice walking in the same track with your partner, which is when you walk with your knees in front of each other's knees, right? Your legs are in front of each other's legs what it is to walk outside to the left, and what it is to walk outside on the close side of the embrace. And that is pretty much what needs to happen. If you guys at home, you're there, you can see me here, I'm on the right side, or on the left side, right side of Eva's. See, I'm on the right side, and then I go one, two, and I position myself on the other side, so then I push from that side, from about 20 degrees. Yes, that's correct, yeah. You, you need an angle to enter because it's still, it's this, the push, what we call the push, is a saccada, basically. You are pushing the leg, you are displacing the leg, is what we call a saccada. You are doing a saccada on the leg, so that change the orbit of this leg. Instead of stepping back, she right. will end up stepping uh, in a crossing position. Uh, and one that more thing point. that is very, very, very important. For the follows, every time or any time you feel like you are behind your own axis, behind your heels, this is the kind of, uh, it can be a major problem. As he said, you can fall on your butt, basically. So what you need is to activate your leg at a certain speed to achieve the reaching out before you put your weight after the cross. So you need to be quick. You need to be relaxed, but at the same time, if you observe this moment, that, 
the moment that I exit that cross. So once I achieve this nice cross, these legs shoo, opens. I cannot cross and just step back with the residual energy from that yes. cross. It's a very bad idea. You always want your legs ahead of your weight, your legs ahead of the rest of your body. So because this is kind of quick, it's milonga, you need to activate your muscles, your back muscles, these muscles that pulls away. The, te the technique is consistent. All the steps begin with an extension. Yes. So if you're walking backwards and you're extending, this is not exception. You go back, cross, back, back, cross, back. Mm -hmm. You need to get out of the way. Yeah, but sometimes the speed and in, in, after the cross follows. I know because I saw it many times, that's why I'm saying this. They kind of get into a sitting position and they, it's harder for them to recover that's a great point. from a sudden change of orbit in that leg. It's like unexpected, right? So don't forget that you, don't, you never want to be in this kind of inclination where you cannot recover. So shoot the leg out. As long as you have time to walk ahead of yourself, Correct. you're in good shape. Yes. Again, again uh, walking ahead of the weight transfer. Let's do it. Yes. Let's go slow. Mm -hmm. Side, one, two, three, four. I don't think we have enough space to cover the whole thing. So that's why doing one side is enough. It's plenty. Mm -hmm. You go once. One, two, three, out. One, two, three, out. See, I do one push only. I step far and I push. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Da, ye, yum, pam, pam. One, pam, pam. Da, you look beautiful in these colors. Thank you. Nice dress. <laughs> we gotta this send uh, our message. Thank you to Selena Rotundo. Our sponsor, she's always making Eva look so beautiful with those beautiful models and clothing. Uh, yes. Also, our friends can uh, help us continue grow our channel by simply making a donation of any amount. Uh, you can buy us coffee, uh, or maybe you can buy us uh, a pair of shoes, <laughs> a pair of tango shoes. Uh, any, any of your contributions will help us stay in place, continue growing our channel, and reaching out and sharing our tango with you. So, as it says here at the bottom, make a donation with PayPal or Venmo. Either way, we haven't gotten any cryptocurrency. No. I do not know anything about crypto. Have you ever seen crypto? I don't know anything no, about crypto, it, but we accept crypto. Because you cannot see it, actually. <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know much about crypto. <laughs> it's not a thing that you can touch. <laughs> okay. All right. How Should about we, we dance? dance? Yes, let's dance. Okay. We have to dance. So we do another exemplification of what we shall share with you. <laughs> Mi 
milonga, nací milonga Y he de morir como soy No sé lo que es el cariño Ni sé lo que es el sufrir Ningún mete con profundo A mí me ha de corregir Milonga, yo vine al mundo Y milonga he de morir Ayer amor me pediste Pero ya estamos en hoy y no duró nunca tanto el amor que siempre doy Y hoy digo basta y me planto como mi longa que soy I love that milonga. I love it too. So you have to loosen up your hips. Bring a little bit uh, the Afro roots the Afro of roots the milonga, milonga, the drums. <laughs> When you relax a little bit and you dance, I think this move flows a lot better. Yeah, I think you can try this. Stay like this and do hips, 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 not torso, hips. So you see if you're flexible there. What do you think? I think it was beautiful. Next week we have tango. We have several ideas in mind. We have to decide what we are going to share. I, uh, there is a little bug that is uh, calling me out no. to do some uh, tango for stage. Tango for stage. One idea. Another one is to, to make some advanced combinations for salon, for the pista. For we the dance floor. Side, yeah. Some nice, long, elegant stepping. Some salon style, mm -hmm. and also to review our the classics, the classic figures. Several ideas in mind. Definitely tonight is the end of the milonga session sessions or series, and we begin with tango next week. We already did twelve milonga for rookies, so you can watch two uh, twelve the last whole videos, the whole collection for milonga. Um, by the time we see you again with Milonga, probably you are very good at all, all this stuff that we, we shall share with you. Yeah. That will, will you come great. next week? I'm planning to. Are you? I will be here for you. Okay. And too. everybody else. Take care, guys. See you next week. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs>